Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Old World Blues in their series Old World Blues A to Z. And what we're playing is everyone's favorite Ant Nation Ant. Um, I'll be honest though, at the time of recording they do not have a unique focus tree, but that's okay because I've not actually used this generic focus tree uh, or played it in really quite a while, but it gives our forefathers. Our forefathers were simple yet wise men, working in the land and seeking a better living for the children. Their hard work and determination gave us a nation for that we will be forever thankful. Cool. And after that, every settlement is built on the backs of those who came before. Those who managed to escape by living from the ruins of the old world. We are defined by what it was our forefathers left behind for us, and while we can never pay them, remember where it was that we came from will help us look to our future. Clean water? Ooh. Forefathers left us factories, that's not bad. Left us with firepower. Honestly, our core population is 6,000 people. We're already on settlement protection. We need population. We need a lot of population. Um, I like this one quite a bit. This is not bad. We have three factories, though. Um, it's probably not going to go very well for us, to be honest. Um, let's see. How much more population can we actually get? But fi Firepower caps resources, all essential to life in the wasteland, and that applies to our nation as well. To survive, we had to focus our efforts and, and dedicate ourselves to a single common purpose. Now, because we have options which way to go, if we go down... Let's see, empower the mayor? No. No, you, you do get... If we go with ruler, you get 2% more population, which is really nice. Um, the people gets you more, way more political power, which is very nice as well. Intellectual gives you more research speed and some light air technology, which is okay, not great. And elite support gives you factory output and more construction speed, which is alright as well. Um, anything else that would give us more, like, population at all would be very nice. Local pride. Honestly, we need industry. Oh, you get more and more popula percent population there, which is pretty good. Um, 1%. Uh, organization, 2% more. Oh, even more than that, too. So that's not bad. If that's the case, we really need some factories. So I'm going to go with some arms factories, actually, of all things. And then what will we become? The way sunlight's before us. Savage, untamed, degenerate, cruel. We must think purpose. Look at the entirety of the blasted nation ahead of us and tame it. We will honor our forefathers and survive. Not only survive, but thrive. Make the impossible come true uh, after the apocalypse. On all generic focus tree branches. Yay. And some more day. Ooh, yes. Because right now, we don't have very much. What we do have is a single division of network guards, and there are nine combat width. So we'll see if we can make this work or not. You know, whatever. Um, Gary Sons. There you go. And we're led by Ant. That you about Ant, please go ahead, right there. Core function, biomass usage for research purposes. So, and we also have a natural spirit, but we'll talk about it in a little bit. What kind of city are we? Any kind of settlement worth a darn has something to do that it does particularly well. Booze, water, guns, you name it, someone's up there doing it. And making a killing while doing it. But folks like us here, we think big picture. We do half a dozen things really well. That's how, that's how you stay on top. So I become a hotspot settlement. Hot for mercenaries and scoundrels. Ooh, daily army XP again. I like that. City of Vices. Ooh, that's a lot more political power. Salvage, metal, water, and everything else. It's not bad, too. We don't have very much here at all. I like this one. I love this one. All the extra political power is going to be so helpful, though. But I'm going to go with Scavenger City, maybe. Um, honestly, I either want to take out these guys or take out these guys. And that should give us enough resources for a while. And if we can go up here, too. What is this? Nordicon? Oh. Oh, they went with Scavenger City, too. Uh, but I don't think they have a unique focus tree. No, they don't. So, if we can be smarter than the AI, we'll do okay. What are these guys? Ter oh, the Termite. Oh, it's just like us. Ant. Dead Husk. Scavenger City. So, if we can steal all their stuff, that'd be great. So, if that's the case, Vice City. Hmm. We have that one. Mercenary City. Ant. Um, make it more difficult. You know what? Let's make it slightly more difficult, maybe? I don't know. Maybe not. I kind of want to go with this one, though. I like this one, but we're going to have to do this type of generic focus tree several times with this whole A to Z series. So, we're going to go Salvage. Salvage, I mean. Salvage. Erecting a Palisade. That's not bad. Um... Political organization. We. Why is Miklos Horthy here? Empower us, daily ruler support, get more population. I really want more population. Funding the schools. What will we become, though? <clears throat> That's a question on everyone's lips. What will we become? <clears throat> Who do we want to be? However, settlement is a little different. Most just want to be safe. They want to, uh, two raiders to stop coming. They want the mutants to leave the area, and they want the water to stay clean. But us? We know you can't get there without greater ambitions. Become powerful. I like that. Become wealthy. Not bad. Become advanced. Research speed, 
Um, I kind of like the construction speed with wealthy here. But let's become powerful. Let's do that one. Fighting the school. 60, oh my gosh. 60 day focuses. Fighting the garage. Alright. Big book of science. I love big book of science. Look at some robots. If you really want robots, damage of garrisons goes down. It's not bad. Generic focus tree seems okay. Not superb, but you know, it seems alright. Uh, additionally, before we get any further, here is our tech levels. Mi pretty mi middle ground for everything except power armor. Literally middle ground for everything, so not bad. Honestly, not bad. I want to go to war quickly. We need to go to war quickly. So we have time to, like, core stuff. Uh, advanced, of course. Not that much manpower, more than us. One is seven. We have four divisions max. So here's the goal. Right now, we're going to go ahead and try. And want to take these guys out. But we're going to need manpower and arms factories. As much as I want to get over here. Um, caps, infrastructure... Vision defense on core territory. We might just have them run into our lines as much as possible. This would be very good to get to because it gives you even another civvy, but 60 day focuses, man. Not good. Supply consumption goes down, which is really awesome, too. But this doesn't give you military factories. Manpower. Oh, it gives an arms workshop. It's only one. Alright, so here's what we're going to probably do. We're probably going to spend a lot of time with this part of the branch first, so erect a palisade. We can afford a target to store threats effectively without casualties. We simply don't have the training as an intermediate measure until we can better train our military forces. We'll teach them entrenchment strategies, such as mowing firing tactics to keep enemies at bay as well as proper trench digging procedures. Plus that. Um, caravan militias. Oh. More and more commercial convoys pass through our cities and we have noticed a curious thing. Guards assigned to them are not actually employees but mercenaries. Promise them a place to stay and better work contracts than their merchant employers will allow us to recruit them into our army, bolstering the ranks with trained professionals. Our gunsmiths. The dire need for more firepower can be resolved in quite a simple way. Sending messengers throughout our nation recruit any gunsmith available into our armed forces will both increase our manufacturing capabilities and bring the small arms expertise into our ranks. I definitely want to get here too. Get a few more guns too. A wall, wall. Yeah. This one's not bad too. <clears throat> Massive investment in a local weaponsmiths. We'll let them recruit more people. Expand their operations with acquired advanced equipment. In return, we'll benefit from weaponry provided at a reduced bulk rate and we'll have priority on any firearm batch over private citizens. Militia commanders. Giving command of militia squads to train veterans will let officers already have frontline experience and deploy along their troops, increasing their effectiveness, and letting their command staff understand the requirements of intense battle better than anyone else. Militia drills. Improve drill structuring and trimming of unnecessary parts of it, as well as streamlining the training program given across the country, overseen by now by veterans and trained personnel, will yield a noticeable increase in the speed in which we can form our militias. It is of the utmost importance that we keep an edge on the field of manpower over our enemies. Militia organization. A reorganization for command staff, as well as division structuring, will yield increased tactical efficiency during battle. Such measures will let our troops fight more effect effectively and maintain formation longer in the face of overwhelming odds, giving time for reinforcements and militia recruitment posters. Making our most trained personnel or elite units into larger than life soldiers portrayed as tough, professional, and ruthless will let us make effective propaganda. Showing these commandos ready to take on and defeat any enemy will both reassure our population and inspire them into enlisting into our militia. Funding the schools. The nation's only strong as its weakest citizen, and everyone knows that knowledge is power. As of undertaking to have both children and adults able to educate themselves from scavenger books and teaching classes, will the nation better itself intellectually, which can only lead to new breakthroughs. Establish a laboratory. Let's click on first and given our scientists and engineers dedicated buildings and equipments in which they can experiment and think we'll consider improving their work conditions allowing them to work on more projects at the same time increasing our intellectual output now, of course we read this one earlier we'll do this one too uh, we'll probably encourage women to serve probably everyone should be able to serve the women of our nation are still afraid for they think war should be left to men we'll show them that they can help destroy the enemy and defend their nation as well sniper training infiltration tactics sniper drills will kill they'll kill a raider just as effectively as any man uh, let's see better sport equipment like I said, book, book, big book of science. Find the garage. Yeah, that would probably be pretty good to do. Um, standardized military. Our militias use vast amounts of different equipment, be it firearms, armor, even sometimes supply and food. Creating and standardizing a basic armament and supply kit will supply our supply line considerably, reducing the strain felt both during offensive and offensive operations. Not really would be bad either. Yeah, that would be bad. Um, transportation vehicles, yes, it's okay. Market auto caps is okay. Funding the garage. Multiple garages formed around the country, dealing with restoration and even manufacturing vehicles. As such, they make valuable assets both from the mechanical expertise and experience dealing with power packs as well as engines. We should fund these garages, let them continue their operations, getting us some additional workshops in the process. As as you can see, we are at war with the termite nation. We're doing all right. We've got eight divisions now. With using these network guards, they're only using militia and the 13 and a half combo with which is. Kind of a drain on manpower. Um, we are going with asymmetric warfare right now too, but I think we'll use enforcers. Um, yeah, this is, using infantry we would be much more efficient use of manpower, but it is what it is for this campaign at least. 
Um, some research speed. And that's why we want a fourth research slot as well. Um, we're holding out for the most part, so. And that's a good way to get more army speed. One thing I did notice though, if you come over here for the like the doctrines, infantry perks, walking infantry does not include militias, which I don't like, but it is what it is. Um, so anything we get here, we're basically just basically getting slightly more army XP, which is you know, all right. It's all right. Not great, but it's just all right. Um, additionally, did we do anything else? We have more Solomon, and we'd eat more war support. We'll go every cap for the army. Um, another focus we'll read probably is plan a wall in the of the community. We can now expand our world without looking inward. The center of our nation is a peaceful community, composed of hard-working civilians. To take care of them, I'll increase our industrial capacity. We'll begin an expansion program of our core city, more factories, more space for people, and even more development and political reorganization. As we begin to realize how truly awful the wasteland is, we must look into every aspect of our society to make sure it survives. Our political system cannot be left aside in the time of strife. It is time we act. And I do want to continue to empower the mayor because we still have no manpower. Political strife cannot be afforded in those dark times. Our mayor is a knowledgeable man, wise as well as strong. He led us to this point, and we can lead us, he can lead us much further. So I'm giving him more power to his position and assure his power in the upcoming crisis. Here we are at everybody. We didn't do very much this episode, but we gotta read a few couple more focuses and then we'll end it and we'll probably see the next episode with a time lapse, but eliminate 
Miko Sorthi. No, rivals. Eliminate rivals. Surrounded by raiders and tribals, degenerates and murderers, we cannot allow this to stand. Protect our nation and our people against this threat. Never again shall we wait behind our walls and be slaughtered by raider warbands. From now on, we'll strike. No coward before us, we shall show no mercy. Personal bodyguard, handpicked officers or soldiers, trained from the veteran within our ranks, shall form the core of our army. The courage and bravery will inspire others. We'll make heroes out of them and organize massive recruitment drives in all of our cities. This will give us many new recruits we can use to stamp out the raider threat as we gain full control of the political system. Absolutely. And for research slots, that's pretty good. Um, and then after these two, sub so trade routes. Increase our commercial trade to lay the foundation for future endeavors in these matters. We'll spend time in caps towards improving our roads and trails leading to the two and from our cities. Brown convoys, as well as trail walkers, uh, can now walk more easily inside our territory with them. Profit will flow. We're establishing a centralized armored rebuilding in every city center will simplify supplies, increase the access to ammo, and give a better working space for military industry, as well as emergency location for militia members to go in case of enemy attack. Um, let's do standardized military. Um, our um, militia should use vast amounts of different equipment. Be it firearms, armor, even sometimes supplying food, of course, which I read earlier, so there's that one. Old world tactics. Inspiration taken from old world data terminals and military manuals will be put to use in improving our armed forces. Old world tactics are effective if too crude for the wasteland. Combining them with skirmishing and guerrilla strategies as well as survival training will make our enemy or our, make our army into a capable fighting force. Fallback tactics, perhaps? Yes? No? Maybe so. Specialized. Recon trips constantly scouting our rear lines for retreat routes as well as pre-planned reinforced defensive positions behind the enemy line. Well, or behind the front line. We'll make our forces able to tactically retreat under a covering fire instead of simply running as fast as possible and soiling their underwear. <clears throat> um, point defense. Point defense strategy designed as such because it's operating requirements. Multiple camouflaged outward outposts armed with long-range weaponry and off the beam path will both harass enemy troops to farm afar and give advantage or give advanced warning as to the composition and strength. Marching drills. But while we refer to it as improved physical and tactical drills, the uh, Frank and Born walk and or Frack and Born walk, as the soldiers have come to call it, aim to improve their strategically mobility uh, via better resilience and faster march. Being able or slightly more swift than the enemy will always be an advan advantage worth having. Some of this for more population, of course, and uh, tactical awareness and mapping. Integrating map awareness and tactical battlefield thinking into the training regiment of our command staff and recon sergeant will make them able to direct our troops more effectively and know the surrounding better. Let's let them move and strike in a rapid fashion as well as organizing ambushes and traps, leaving no respite uh, to the enemy and long distance movements. Spanning upon our march and drills, we have managed to improve it as to also maintain tactical awareness and combat stances and proper battle spacing during long walks. As such, our troops are more ready to face an enemy counterattack or immediately join an assault without having to stay or stop and regroup. But that's going to be it for this episode. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we will go to war with the Bumblebee and hopefully not die. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.